All of a sudden, the ROG Ally has become the poster child of a good Windows handheld, overshadowing the MSI Claw's glaring shortcomings. However, this acclaim is not entirely justified. In fact, the ROG Ally still harbors significant issues that have yet to be resolved, making it a purchase to approach with caution. There are three major problems with the ROG Ally that we need to examine to determine if it's a viable option to consider buying now. Okay, before we even go into all of this, let me tell you, Asus is infamous for its horrendous after-sales services, and this is a fact. If you haven't experienced it, just search for it on the internet, and you will find countless videos from reputable tech reviewers who vouch for this. See, Asus's main charm is that they do not fear to experiment with their devices. If there is a new three-screen foldable laptop, I am pretty sure it's gonna be from Asus, and doing these innovative devices that resonate with consumers has actually brought them into the top laptop manufacturer spot over the past couple of years. And fairly so, when all the other companies were too afraid to try something new, Asus always tried to freshen things up for us, and I am all for it. But the problem happened when their half-baked and bad quality control products reached the market, and a lot of people actually bought them and they started to see a massive amount of backlash. For example, they had this product called the ZenBook Duo Laptop Series, where they had a small screen above the keyboard which can act as a second screen, and it is a pretty rad concept. Plus, it is an expensive laptop, but it is rife with issues. Don't believe me? Search it, and you will find terrifying user experiences, and the most horrifying part of this problem is that these laptops went good till the warranty periods, and then they started to fall apart. Some of them went completely dead, and the top model of this laptop could set you back by 3,000 USD. Just imagine buying 3,000 bucks tech that's being used as a paperweight. It's just one product, there are many such cases, and ROG Ally is another product that joins the same queue. the laggy FPS and overheating issue. The first major issue involves the SD card reader. Numerous users have reported their SD cards either not being recognized or suffering from extremely slow transfer speeds after prolonged use. Initially dismissed as a simple driver issue, Asus later identified thermal stress as the culprit. This admission by Asus's community manager confirmed that internal testing showed the SD card reader could malfunction under specific thermal conditions. This issue has frustrated many Ally owners, especially since expandable storage via SD cards was a key feature touted by Asus. Asus is working on a software update that will tweak the default and minimum fan speeds, aiming to reduce the internal temperature and mitigate the thermal stress on the SD card reader. However, this solution comes with a trade-off. Higher fan speeds mean increased noise levels, which Asus promises to keep in check. For those already experiencing issues with their Ally's SD card reader, Asus has advised contacting customer service to initiate a return merchandise authorization RMA process. In some cases, the device may need to be shipped back to Asus for inspection and potential hardware repairs or replacements of the faulty SD card reader. Now, it's good that Asus didn't fool people long saying that some over-the-air magical update is going to fix all the issues by waiving an OTA want, Rather, they came out and tried to RMA all the devices without questions asked. I am not praising them for this. I don't condone selling out under-tested products and RMA the crap out of them, and people praise them for how good their service is. This shouldn't have happened in the first place. How can they make such a huge mess? But considering their past, where their customer service has been trash, this was a good welcome action from their side. Let's move on the next one. The stick drift. The infamous stick drift problem that ruins the experience for any gamer on a handheld device. And guess what? Even the ROG Ally has it. And that too, a lot of ROG allies suffer from this. These problems can seriously affect gameplay, making precise control in games frustratingly difficult. A joystick dead zone refers to an area of the joystick's range of motion where input is not registered causing delayed or no response in-game. 
Stick drift, on the other hand, results in unintended movement, as if the joystick is being moved without any actual input. This issue is particularly problematic in shooter games where precision is key. The origin of the joystick dead zone issue seems to be a software problem related to the device's armory crate software rather than a hardware fault. This is somewhat good news as software issues can potentially be resolved with updates, whereas hardware problems might require physical repairs or replacements. Users on the ROG Ally subreddit and Discord have been vocal about these problems, expressing disappointment and considering returning the device. The community has also been active in trying to diagnose and find solutions, with some suggesting the problem could be fixed through software updates or adjustments to the controller's settings. But there are many machines that did have hardware-related stick drift issues, and then again, they got RMA, or fixed by Asus's customer support. Yes, it's a pain, but what else can someone do? They have already paid for this faulty piece. The screen won't turn on. Another frustrating problem that ROG users have been facing is where it suddenly stops turning on or charging. Many users have reported this problem, often occurring unexpectedly, even during trips or after just a few weeks of use. One user shared their experience of trying various troubleshooting steps, such as holding the power button for a minute, pressing volume down and power buttons together, and using different chargers and outlets, but none of these methods worked. They had to resort to taking the device to a repair center, which estimated a 5-10 working day turnaround time. However, some users have suggested potential fixes that could be tried before opting for the repair route. One recommendation is to remove the back cover, disconnect the battery for 10 minutes, reconnect it, and reassemble the device. This has reportedly resolved the issue for some users. Another suggestion involves a specific button combination. Plug in the charger, hold the power and volume down buttons for 20 seconds, release the power button while still holding volume down, then release volume down and press the power button. This trial and error approach has worked for some users who thought their device was dead. While these methods may not work for everyone, they are worth trying before sending the device for repair, as they could potentially save time and hassle. If the issue persists, seeking professional assistance from the repair center may be the best course of action. Just imagine, you've bought a new handheld device and you're having so much fun with it, but after three days, it just won't turn on. How would you feel? Crashes and low FPS with every BIOS or Windows update, ROG Ally users have been facing a frustrating issue after installing the recent March 2024 Windows update. Many users have reported significant performance drops, with games stuttering and running at a mere 15 frames per second FPS, despite showing higher frame rates on monitoring tools. The culprit seems to be the Windows 11 KB5035853 update and recent AMD driver updates released in March 2024. Users with AMD-powered devices, including the ROG Ally and AMD laptops, have been affected by this performance degradation. One Reddit user shared their experience, stating that even older games like Doom 2 have become unplayable due to stuttering issues after the update. Another user mentioned that World of Warcraft, which previously ran smoothly, now struggles to maintain 30, 40 FPS with abrupt stuttering. Fortunately, there are a few potential fixes that users can try to alleviate the performance issues. Open the AMD Adrenaline app, navigate to Settings Preferences, and disable the in-game overlay toggle. Restart the ROG Ally after making this change. Search for Uninstall Updates in the Start menu. Locate the KB5035853 update and click Uninstall to remove the problematic update. Access the advanced settings in the AMD Adrenaline app and reset the application to its default state. But this is nothing new for ROG Ally users. Last time it was the BIOS update from ASUS that almost crashed every Ally out there. This is extremely frustrating for users because there is no coherence or mutual understanding between the ASUS drivers and Windows patches. This happens so often that it has become a running joke in the Reddit groups. These are just a few of the many hemorrhoid level problems that will literally make you want to sell the ROG Ally just two weeks after owning it. See, I will tell you, when the ROG Ally works, it works really well. 
and some of these problems have already been fixed. The ROG Ally has been out there with people for almost a year now, and it was a learning experience for ASUS customer support too. Now these problems don't happen so often, but they still exist. Especially the problem with the Windows update, I'm not sure what kind of mess they have made, but with every Windows update, the ROG Ally becomes a freaking brick with 20,000 problems. Just imagine if a ROG, a product that uses a well-tested CPU from AMD, known to be very user-friendly and easy to work with, has so many problems, what kind of issues are waiting for MSI Claw buyers who have the super buggy Intel chipset in them? These are just a few problems that I have listed, and there are many that you just live with once you buy it. Right now, Windows handhelds cannot give you a console-like experience like the Steam Deck, Nintendo Switch, or PS5. They are still mini PCs with joysticks around them. But I have a very positive outlook towards the future of Windows handhelds because if not today, tomorrow, Microsoft will launch a good handheld supportive overlay that can talk with the controllers and CPU, GPU in a most consistent and better manner. What I'm just trying to tell you with this video is that a product like the ROG Ally is still fighting with problems. Do you really think an experimental product like the MSI Claw will be better or free from them? It will be much worse on it. So be very wary while buying these expensive handhelds and be prepared to troubleshoot something going wrong every fifth day if you own them. It's just part of the early adoption of this tech. This is where we are going to end the episode and I will see you guys next time. If you liked what you saw here, drop a sub and leave your thoughts in the comments.